Presented by Phoenix Rising. Tupperware for Men. Ammo Can and Dry Storage Review. Phoenix Rising here and today we're going to be talking about dry storage boxes and ammo cans and what to look for when you're buying a box. We'll be doing some review work on them and putting these to the acid test, or at least these four, to see how well they hold up and will they actually keep water out. So lots of good stuff coming up. Stay tuned, like and subscribe, and let's get into our review and test. Okay, so here are our four contenders, two plastic and two metal boxes. Uh, we'll go over just the brands so you can kind of point them out, and then we'll individually look at all these. I'll do some close-ups, insert some photographs, and, and we'll spec them out before we go and actually put water around them and see if they keep water out and stuff. So, uh, for starters, we have this Stout Stuff box. Now, this was purchased at Wally World for like 5 or $6. Fairly lightweight plastic box. A uh, locking mechanism on the top, seal inside, uh, just a standard plastic storage box that you could put fishing tackle, uh, ammunition, whatever you want to keep dry and safe in. Uh, our next plastic box is by MTN. This is a case guard box and it's uh, also got a seal in it, made to be watertight or water resistant. And uh, this company makes a lot of different products. I've seen them at different uh, sporting goods stores, different things online. This just happens to be a smaller uh, ammo box. But uh, they're reasonably priced too and, and seem to be fairly well constructed as well. So we'll take a look at construction on those. Then we have two metal boxes, okay? Now, first we have first USGI. And this is, again, this is a standard by which everything else should be judged because this stuff is made to store heavy ammunition for years, carried around to the far corners of the world, handle abusive handling, still keeping stuff dry and safe and secure. Then it often gets used by military personnel to store stuff uh, because it's a, it is a great container. Then shipped back here and we buy them at surplus stores and they're still great containers. So again, tough to beat, a little on the pricey side and you do have to look to make sure you're not getting damaged goods because it's surplus. Uh, lastly, we have a surplus knockoff, and this one came from Wally World. It actually has Wally World uh, on it. Uh, this was about $10 or $15, a little bit cheaper than a surplus of military can. Uh, is it as good? I mean, if you look at it, let's, let's spin these around real quick. Okay. Uh, I mean, you look at it and you think, man, this is this is this is should be as good, man. It looks the same. Uh, all sides. They got it pretty much, uh, pretty much nailed the look. But is it actually built as well? Well, we're going to find that out too because we're going to measure some key thicknesses dimensionally on this, like metal thicknesses with paint. Uh, we're going to look at the construction sealing on it. Uh, we're also going to weigh these to see how much empty they weigh because mass is a good thing <laughs> not if not when you're toting it but when you're looking for protection it's a good thing so uh, we're going to look at all of that and then like i said we're going to fill these full of something and put them in a in a tub of water leave them soak for a while and we'll see if these all actually cut the mustard for being a real dry storage box so uh that's what we're going to do of course index coming up for each of these steps and uh let's get to it and have some fun Okay, here's our first uh, contender I wanted to talk about, and this is a relatively cheap box. It's a Stout Stuff Field Box, okay? Uh, now you look on it, it's got our little uh, splashy, splashy icon here, but when you actually read it, it says it's water-resistant O-ring seal, and it says perfect for all ammunition. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sorry, if I'm buying something to store ammunition in, uh, no, water-resistant is not... <laughs> This is not the perfect solution for that, okay? Uh, might be handy sitting in my closet or trips to the range, but other than that, uh, that'd be about it. So anyway, this isn't an expensive box. This is maybe five, six bucks uh, Walmart. You can hear that's not exactly the thickest material. You can see how easy that is to flex. And even 
even where the seal is in the top, it's flexing easy. See? Uh, so again, this is not really, uh, this is, I'll, I'll be honest, but when we put this in the water, it's not going to hold water. But I wanted to show it to you. Now, when I'm looking at any dry storage box, if I'm going to look at it in the store book and think if I want to buy it, one of the things that I do look for is the, the type of clamping mechanism. This has what looks like a secure enough clamp, although this is just a bailing wire, it looks like. But what I look for is when the lid's closed, uh, close it down, and I'm going to go ahead and as I lock this down, I want to see the lid compressed down to know that I'm getting a good seal, okay? And really no change where this does lock it firmly. I didn't see much of a change, so I don't get the impression that it's actually compressing the lid down on the seal. Now, uh, another thing, and we'll do this for all of these, I'm going to open this up and let's take a look at the seal. And I'll insert pictures uh, on this stuff too. As you can see, there's a rubber seal in here. Uh, there, is no, there is no lip on this thing particularly, right? It's just a flat plastic. And you can see this, uh, our locking mechanism for the lid is not really super, super tight. Uh, if I can get this even on here. Kind of popped off there on me. So uh, not real secure, not a knife edge seal on this. And when I look at the, look at the uh, rubber seal, I don't see any indentation where it was closed, where uh, where the the body was actually pressed into the seal to give you any kind of water resistance whatsoever. So uh, this is what you're going to get for your five dollars, okay? And like I said, we're going to put this thing in the water, and I'll guarantee you it will be full of water when we get it out. But we're going to do that anyway. So there you go. Uh, stout stuff, field box, water resistant, perfect for all ammunition. Okay. Okay, next we have our MTM case guard. And uh, this is www.mtm case-guard.com. Now I've seen these at uh, these same similar boxes, different colors, different styles, big, small, at various sporting goods places online. Uh, I think I actually ordered these on Amazon, like a set of four of them in a little tote for them so you could uh, use them for a myriad of uses. Uh, again, plastic box. Let's go ahead and do some of the same thing. Uh, Seems a little stiffer than the uh, than our first uh, stout stuff box. Uh, pressing on it, yeah, I can deflect it fairly easy. And when we look at the seal, as I go in here and press this, uh, yeah, I can see it flexing the top a little bit. But it has a little bit more rigidity. It has extra material up top to make it a little more rigid. So that's all a good thing. Uh, the plastic hatch doesn't really doesn't really seem to do a lot as far as tension but what I will say is when we're looking at this up close if this camera will focus when I do lock it down notice there's there's it just sitting and it does actually squeeze down a little bit not a lot of force but a little bit uh, of force uh, to on the lid so let's go ahead and open it up and look at our seal area uh, first off again this is thick thicker much thicker plastic okay a little bit better built than the other one and I don't know if you can see it good here, but this actually has a little knife edge lip on your uh, on the top to give you a better seal. Uh, again, it has foam rubber insert in here. And as I'm looking at this, I'll take some pictures. And as I'm looking, what I'm seeing is it looks like there's a slight indentation going on the foam seal. And this is, looks like a very foamy type of seal. Uh, going pretty much all the way around, but what I'm noticing is when I get to the hinge area in the back here I'm not seeing any indentation from the lip So what my gut feeling is is that where this is going to be more water resistant Than our uh, than the stout stuff I think this MTM is going to leak because I'm not seeing any place where this edge is being deformed From the seal at the hinge area, okay? And that may just be this example, but uh, again, a little bit of a lockdown on there, and we'll see if we can show this a little better. A little bit of a lockdown, 
so yes it is it is it's better it's better than our better than our last plastic box but I don't think this is going to cut the mustard for being water tight uh, but it does have a better water resistance level on this particular uh, box than our previous plastic contender so uh, and that's all the review I'm going to actually do aside from filling these plastic ones full of water because hey they're plastic boxes are cheap okay Okay, so here we have our Walmart knockoff ammo can, and uh, we'll take some measurements and weigh this thing, see how this compares, and I'll probably be inserting uh, some pictures showing the differences in construction between that and our military surplus can uh, that I feel are maybe significant. So uh, first off, let's go ahead and check the weight on this to see how heavy this is compared to our other one. So I've got it on our little scale here, and I'm showing 5 pounds, 5.2 ounces. Uh, we go to our military spec can, 5 pounds, 4.4 ounces. Okay, so it's got the mass, uh, so it should be uh, not a lot of skimping if there is in materials. So let's go ahead, and uh, what I'll do is we'll get the scale out of the way. I'm kind of surprised. I thought the Walmart can was actually going to be a little uh, less weighty. So we'll look at the seal now, and this is okay. If you look, I'm going to close this down. Now that is as far as this is going down uh, without compression, okay? So we've got, again, we're definitely sealing the case, and we've got a nice folded over rounded metal lip on the side of the can. So let's go ahead, flip it down. That's a, that's, I'm going to say that's a pretty darn good seal, or at least it looks it, right? So let's uh, go ahead, open this back up, and take a look. Our lid off. Let's go ahead and take a look at our seal. Now, I'm seeing the seals. The seal's definitely rubber. It's not just foam rubber. It's a rubberized seal. And in looking at it, I've got very positive engagement of the seal all the way around. So, what I will notice is is in the shape and the way this is locked down. My seal goes from the very inside edge here all the way to the outside edge on this corner. Uh, so it's not exactly uniform, but it does actually cut into the rubber very nicely. So I have no doubt that this thing will uh, do well on our waterproof test. Uh, overall construction, a lot of spot welds on it. it seems to be built pretty well there, okay? Uh, so far, I'm fairly content with uh, the way this thing looks. Now, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and I'm looking down in the inside if we can get, I don't know if we can get enough good light down in here or not. And uh, I can see where there's a, a little bit of a rough surface where it's been sealed uh, or welded. And that goes for the seam on the inside too. Uh, bottom, again, bottom seam looks of good quality. Now I notice a little chip in the paint and the paint I don't think the paint is that thick on this, okay? I'm getting the impression that if, it, if there is any skimping, part of it is going to be in the coating that's on this. It's not is, uh, going to be as many mils thickness as paint. So uh, we'll go ahead, we'll come back and maybe see if I can take some measurements. Now let's take a look at our USGI can. Okay, first off, go ahead and unlock it. And Notice, sim similarly, it's compressing this seal a lot. Seems like it's sitting up just a little bit taller, so maybe a little bit more compression required. The sides do fit tighter on the military can. Uh, lock function's about the same. Again, I'm looking, I'm seeing the same, same sort of, uh, same rivets, uh, sort of rivets, same spot weld pattern. Uh, a little bit more maybe seal materials used on the military can. Uh, paint's a little wore off. Paint does not really appear to be hugely that thick. Uh, looking at the bottom of it, again, this thing's handled some abuse. Uh, it looks like there's a wider seam on the bottom of this 
than on the not. I mean, I see I see more ceiling materials or something right here uh, going across the edge here. It's not as pretty looking, but it looks like uh, maybe a little bit more materials. If that makes any sense. Uh, what else can we look at from the side here? Go ahead and take our lid off. Okay, lids off, let's take a look at our seal now. Uh, looking at our seal here, I noticed that the seal has uh, got a bigger indentation on the USGI than the uh, Walmart brand. If you'll look at that, a lot, uh, lot more bite in the design. And when I'm holding up your hinge areas, what, what I'm noticing is there is a difference in the hinge design. Uh, the USGI is a little bit shorter, not as long or extended uh, of a hinge flap down here. And I'm sure we're going to see the same thing when we spin around our cans. The Walmart brand is just a hair taller, but again, you're not, uh, you've got a bigger gap here and a little bit of a different design there but i like the fact that this military grade can you are getting a lot more bite and it's uniform all the way around it's not uh it's not uh all the way on one inside edge here towards the outside edge on the other so a lot better uniformity in production there okay now uh there was something else that i was looking at and that is uh also where your sides come in on your uh where your sides kind of come in to grip the sides of the can, give you protection, line it up. I think the, the USGI can is a little more aggressive there to where it's actually, uh, you've got a metal to metal contact. It's better on the sides of the can than you do on the Walmart brand can. What else can we observe from just looking at these two here? I'm not really seeing any differences in your, uh, catch and locking mechanisms those all look pretty much the same oops if I get them turned all right the same way spot welds uh, again spot welds all appear to be uh, about the same I'm not seeing a lot of difference there so I think I think material wise it looks like the Walmart uh, can it's probably done just about as well as the military can is, okay? Uh, I don't think it's quite as uniform. It is just slightly higher, like maybe maybe an eighth of an inch taller than the USGI can. Uh, again, same, you know, very similar welding, uh, similar sealing to it. Uh, I think the Walmart can is actually probably pretty good, uh, pretty good value when it comes down to it. But, uh, like I said, the one thing I'm seeing is that it does not bite as heavily into the seal as a USGI can does. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we will measure the thicknesses here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll measure just lip, lip thickness right off the bat. And uh, of course I'm trying to do this backwards here. So let's go ahead and zero our little calipers. And uh, okay, so USGI, I'm, um, whoops, Close it, trying to get it to where you can, uh, trying to get it to where you can uh, see it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so lip thickness on the top, I'm coming in at 0 0.07 on the USGI. And very slightly thinner at 0 0.06 on the Walmart can. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> I also wanted to measure thickness where it's not folded over in the top. So what we'll do is we'll put a nickel down beneath to where we can actually, uh, it won't be the actual thickness we're measuring, but it'll be uh, representative for differences. Okay. So, okay. So I have... 0.15 on the USGI. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with the Walmart. Uh, 
and uh, 0 0.0, it was flexing 0 0.13, 0 0.14. So yeah, we're basically just a very, very slightly, maybe a thousandth <coughs> uh, thinner, or a hundredth, I'm sorry, a hundredth thinner uh, wall thickness on the Walmart can compared to the USGI. Now, is that, uh, is that a difference? Yes, but realistically, from a uh, perspective of usability, for your average user, the Walmart can is probably going to be fine, even though it is slightly thinner, even though it doesn't have quite the same grip on the uh, ceiling surface. Uh, and it doesn't see, you know, I'm, again, I'm actually, I thought I was going to see a greater difference in the quality of the build between these two, uh, even with, you know, the paint, like if I'm looking at the paint thickness on a USGI can is probably, again, maybe might be a couple thousandths, uh, maybe a thousandths, a little bit thicker paint. I don't really have any good uh, chip spots on the Walmart can to kind of feel, but where I'm feeling where paint's been chipped off a little bit on the USGI can in certain spots, I would say probably have a little bit thinner paint on the Wally World can. It's definitely slightly thick, thinner metal, but not hugely. It's not cheap by a long shot, but it is just slightly thinner. And, uh, and then it doesn't bite the seal quite as much okay so uh, all in all I think if I if I okay if I got a good if I got a good price on USGI cans you know what I'm gonna buy USGI cans <laughs> I, I, I will I don't mind a little bit of rust uh, because for if I want to store something I trust those and uh, and they've had a long and uh, history service life Worked good for many years the Wally World can I'll be honest, uh, I'm a little surprised. I thought it was going to fare a little less, uh, a little less favorably in construction, but the reality of it is, uh, I'd have no problem storing stuff in, for longer term in this, you know. Uh, again, I'm looking at it, and I'm not seeing as much of a difference as I initially, you know, when I first picked it up, I thought, oh, this isn't going to match up so well, but, uh, but it actually is a pretty decent can. Uh, of course, now, put it in a harsh environment, where maybe whatever other sealing mechanisms aside from the spot welding and the, and the other construction, maybe it, it might not, but I think for practical purposes, for most people, myself included, uh, hey, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to fuss too much. Now I'm looking, and one other thing that I, that I did just happen to notice, and I'm going to point this out just because I just noticed it, uh, is that, okay, where your hinge is uh, mounted on the back, right, I see maybe one spot where there's a little bit of a dimpling where the spot weld was done on the inside. However, let's see if I can show you this. On the inside of the Walmart can, I'm seeing where the welds are a little bit greater. Uh, I can see where basically just about all the spot welds are. Uh, and is that a bad thing? Uh, no, just a noticeable little difference. And that might be, in fact, due to the fact that, you're, uh, that you do have just a, a hundred... Of an inch thinner material on the body of the Walmart can. So there you go. Uh, there's our physical comparisons. Now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pause and then we're going to go out and uh, ballast these, put them in a trash can, we'll fill it full of water and we'll see how that works out for all four of these. Okay, so here we are in the backyard, and I've got our four contenders for water resistant or uh, dry storage. And uh, I've got canned goods and bags of change in there to weigh them down so that hopefully they won't try and float when we put them in our trash can here and fill it full of water. So let's go ahead and close these up. We'll stage them in there and see how our water tight integrity test goes. Dive! Dive! <laughs> Gotta love it, huh? And the acid test begins.
Okay, we're back. We had some technical difficulties in that all of the containers actually didn't have enough weight in any of them. So I had to uh, add some extra weight to all the containers. That's why we've got grass floating around in there now. But uh, I think I've got everything ballasted down enough to where we're sitting under there. Oh, that didn't look good. I just saw a bubble. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I'm going to say that the uh, that, that uh, the green box there is... Uh, already failing we're not getting uh, we're it, it's already glug 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 and that's just with a few inches of water over the top so no surprises there i don't guess but we're going to go ahead and let the test go as it is now i've not seen any bubbles out of the mtm uh can, can yet which is a good thing I'm not going to say that it's not going to but uh, we'll go ahead fill this thing to the top lever set and then we'll see just what we end up with uh in a while Okay, so we got our trash can filled with water. As you can see, uh, where's the flex seal guy when you need him? Because we're leaking from the handles, where those go through. And I noticed it was seeping from the bottom, uh, even before it got to the handle. So uh, let's just go ahead, we'll take a couple measurements here. Just because we can. Oops, I can manage to work my, uh, work my tape measure here. Okay, so right now with it filled all the way up to the top, we're looking at literally uh, about 18 and a half inches of water on top of our metal ammo cans. And we're about 11 inches. Uh, we'll give it 11 and a half. So we got 18 and a half and 11 and a half. Now, uh, I'll put the math up on the screen, but... Uh, water is one pound of pressure with water one psi is equal to 27.7 inches of water so we're less than a psi of pressure on on the regular ammo cans and literally maybe a third of a pound of pressure if that on the plastic ones and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the water off or maybe just leave it to a slight trickle to where what's going to happen is uh, What's going to happen is it'll drop down to the handle level and hopefully it, the little bit that's seeping out the bottom because I want to keep this on here for a number of hours. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let this drain down a little bit and come back and take a look in a while. Okay, so here we are. We're back. As you can see, it's getting a, a little dusk here. And we have now had all of our ammo cans sitting in water for almost seven hours about six hours and 45 minutes at this time so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead pull the hose out and i'm going to lift these plastic ammo cans out not by the handles but by the bodies because my concern is once you get weight in these and you lift up by the handle if there is a seal then you're very likely going to break the seal and that would kind of defeat our purposes of doing this test a little bit so let's go ahead, uh, I'll, I'll set the camera down, get these boxes out again. I'll be lifting them from the body, so I'm not, if there is a seal, I'm not going to break it by the lid flexing. Uh, then we'll put them back together, put them in, and lift them up by the handle and see if that makes a difference. So uh, give me a minute, we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to... Uh, verify what our resting level is uh, which is a little bit less than what it was when we first started so uh, looking at it right here we have about seven and a half inches of water over our plastic cans and we've got about 14 and a half inches over our uh over our metal cans and uh and i'll, I'll do the uh We'll do the math and see just how much actual pressure it is. It's not going to be much, half a pound maybe for the metal uh, metal can. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start lifting these things out. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth. <laughs> and I will tell you that the, uh, this, uh, whatever, what, what's this one, this, uh, this green one, our, uh, What's the name on that? Uh, Stout Stuff. Uh, just when I lifted it up, even though I lifted it up by the body, 
Uh, this thing went glug glug and a couple big air bubbles came out. So I'm willing to bet that we got a fish tank here. So let's go ahead and open this one up. And uh, no, we don't actually have a fish tank, but you can see that it definitely did not withhold water. So if you had ammunition or cameras or phones or something of value in there, uh, while it did manage to keep the water out with this slight amount of pressure we had, it did not actually uh, totally keep it out. So uh, there you go. There's our, uh, our little $5 box. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our MTM case guard. And I noticed no bubbles in this thing or anything when we were doing this before. So let's go ahead and open it up. And, oh, not as bad, but a little bit of water did seep in, okay? So it was not, I was, I didn't see any bubbles when we were actually doing this. So I kind of thought that maybe that MTM box might have actually kept the water out. And it did better than the other, but it wasn't foolproof. So we're going to go ahead and close these back up. I'm going to carefully place them back down in. And then we'll lift them out by the handles. Uh, because, you know, once you get weight in these things and you lift them up, that lid's going to flex. We'll see if, the, if that actually uh, makes it to where they're a lot worse. Which I, I would think that it would, but we're going to see. Okay. Uh, got them both back in the box. You can see our... Our uh, tough whatever thing is uh, blugging, blug, 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 as we, uh, as we look at it. And for some reason, even though our MTM uh, sat okay earlier, now it's got, I guess, the weight kind of shifted, so it's kind of upended. So let's go ahead and just lift it out. And again, because it's got such buoyancy, uh may not have really made a difference okay if it was full and heavier uh heavy enough to actually sit it might make more so let's go ahead and pull on this mtm up box and lift it out and we'll just go ahead and pop these open and see what we can see here okay oh yeah uh from sitting it back down in there and lifting it up by the handle a lot of uh got disturbed a little bit a lot more water in it and uh, really, I didn't see much of a change on the MTN. Now, this may not be a good, a real true test for lifting them up by the handle because, again, they're not full of ammunition and they're, you know, I've got just enough weight to ballast them and that's about it. So, uh, well, it is what it is. Neither of them work good, but the MTM does do, uh, is a little, got a little bit better splash resistance or submersion resistance, slightly more so than the, uh, Tough box, or I can't remember the darn stout box, whatever. So let's go ahead. Uh, and what the heck, we can, we'll just reach down in here and snatch these other two out of here. Uh, okay. And there's our box number one, box number two. Okay. And I don't, I, I seriously don't think we're going to have any issues with the USGI or the Walmart box, but you never know. And, of course, bone dry. Uh, I'm looking in the, there's our USGI, not a drop of water down in there, and I would expect no less on the Walmart box. Now, a little drop laying in there, but I think that's for me popping the lid open and just a couple of little drips flying. So... Okay, so there you have it. Uh, there we've got four boxes, four dry boxes, or uh, two dry boxes, two wet boxes. <laughs> Which was, again, I didn't expect any different, but it's uh, nice to actually see it in practice. So uh, there you go. That's it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this thing up. Okay, so let's do a quick wrap up. Uh, to this Tupperware for Men, uh, aka dry storage review video. Uh, lots of products out there. We only sampled just a couple, but uh, I wanted to. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, just to compare. You know, I know the GI cans, the surplus cans, are great stuff. They'll hold up, do a, protect your stuff very well. I uh, wasn't so sure on the Walmart brand knockoffs. I wasn't sure if they were going to actually hold up 
like a USGI can and that was a pleasant surprise that it's a little bit thinner material but again held up very well I'd have no problem storing my ammunition or camera gear or something else like that in this going canoeing it and even if it gets dumped in on a lake or a river and I fish it back out pretty soon I wouldn't I wouldn't anticipate any problems here plastic cans no uh, there may be some plastic cans that might be watertight to a limited depth uh, not talking pelican cases just ammo type cans but realistically if you're going to buy plastic cans and it, it's fine for storing stuff in your house where it's dry up high on a shelf something like that but if you're expecting or want protection against water any of these you're going to need to either put your stuff in a ziploc bag uh, you know, a vacuum seal it, something else to guarantee that you're not going to take water damage to your electronics, ammunition, or whatever you're choosing to store in. So keep that in mind on the plastic boxes. That wasn't a real big surprise. But again, when you're looking at any container, okay, look and see, hey, how, how, much, how much does this thing spring down or how much do you have to compress it to close it? Look at your knife edges. Do all the due diligence stuff to make sure that you're getting a product that's going to meet your needs because it is buyer beware. And a lot of this stuff is being sold as, you know, hey, great for dry ammunition storage, but maybe not. Uh, so do your due diligence. And as always, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. That's the fuel that keeps this channel going. And when you do that, you'll be notified of any new videos that we uh, produced uh, for your uh, enjoyment. So thanks for watching and until next time. I hope you enjoyed this video on Tupperware for Men Dry Storage Container Review. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free to download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without written consent. Thanks for watching.